Adobe has finally released another update for Adobe Lightroom Classic. This most recent update is 9.3 and honestly, it's pretty awesome. Not only did Adobe optimize Lightroom a little bit more and speed it up a little bit, but there's a few awesome features that have been added that we've been needing in Lightroom for the longest time. And honestly, I'm super excited that these features are finally here with us. Today, we're gonna be exploring some of the updates from 9.3 and I'm gonna show you guys my favorite ones and how I think they're gonna fit into my editing workflow in the future. If you're new here, what's up? My name is Sean, I'm a travel and lifestyle photographer and I put out weekly videos to teach you how to become a better photographer. So if you're new here, what's up? Welcome to the channel. We'd love to have you subscribe. Also, if you guys haven't checked that out already, I'm giving away a free orange and teal preset pack there's a link in the description. You can just go there and download that. You can use those on Lightroom Mobile or desktop, whatever. Those are completely free and for you guys to enjoy. But okay, so what are some of these updates that Adobe has made? Well, for one, there's a fancy new icon and yeah, I mean, it's okay. I don't know. It's just, uh, it just looks kind of funky to me. I prefer the old icon, but it doesn't look bad. By all means, it doesn't look bad. But other than this little icon, there are some actually pretty awesome features that I'm pumped about. Uh, but let's get some of the insignificant ones out of the way first before we jump into the good stuff. So first off, Adobe has updated the speed a little bit. It's a little bit faster. It's a little bit more optimized. So editing is gonna be easier, especially if your computer is lagging behind a little bit. They're always continuously optimizing the software so it's getting better and better and easier for us to work with. So one of the things that's helping performance in particular is in the past when you would slide a slider, it would automatically update the thumbnail right away down here, but as you can see, now it waits until I unclick and then it updates it. So it's not working at the same time. It's lagging behind a little bit, but that actually helps performance quite a bit. So that's one of the updates that helps speed. Also, another thing that they've done is grid mode is much improved. It's easier to scroll through the grid now. In the past, this was kind of clunky and choppy and this just works a lot better. So that's pretty cool when you're sorting photos, you can go through here and it's a little bit quicker, a little bit easier. Another kind of Insignificant update is cloud has been improved. So this has been improved over the years, but now if you wanna sync between Lightroom Mobile or just sync to Adobe Creative Cloud, it's a little bit better, it's a little bit faster, a little bit easier, and there's this little icon up here uh, and everything is kind of laid out nicely. Honestly, I'm not often syncing stuff to the cloud with Adobe Lightroom. I use Google Drive to sync everything. Um, but if you are gonna be syncing some of your catalogs over to edit on mobile or something like that, that's a pretty cool feature. So those changes, yeah, they're cool, they're fine, but that's not the good stuff. There's two big changes that I am super, super psyched about. The first one is the tone curve update. So they've slightly updated this little tone curve here and you can see how you can go between the individual channels very easily. Um, but what's so great about it is now it shows the colors within the tone curve. And as a photography teacher, I cannot tell you how much I love this because it shows you what colors you're gonna get if you move that tone curve. So for example, if I drag this down, I'm gonna be adding blues into the shadows. If I drag this up, I'll be adding reds into the highlights, right? So you can mess around with this. Another cool thing is if you right click, you can snap to grid and then it'll automatically snap it to a, a, a very specific point. That's great if you're doing multi-channel tone curve and you wanna make sure all the tones are matching up in the right, in the right place in the tone curve. That's a really awesome feature. And also now you can actually input points. So you can put like 125, if you want it to be very specific, um, then you can go through the separate tone curves and do that as well. So that's honestly a really cool thing because now you can make it super specific. In the past, you'd be like, trying to look really close to the screen and trying to get it right on point so it's exactly where you want it and it's just kind of impractical. So this will allow us to be a lot more precise and a lot more effective when we're editing with the tone curve. The other major update that I am super, super, super excited about, this is my favorite update, we've been needing this for so, so long, is the ability to adjust the hue in our selective edits. So let me show you how this works. I'm just gonna do a quick, quick little edit here. Add some contrast, okay, I don't really care. That's fine. So typically when we get to the selective edits, you know, say we're using a brush or a graduated filter or a radio filter, what we'll do is we'll, we'll paint over that area, we'll create our selection and we can edit a lot of things. You can edit all this stuff, but now we can edit the hue. We actually have a hue adjustment here and we couldn't do that in the past. If you wanted to adjust the color, you could mess with the white balance and hope that that would make enough color changes for you. But now we have a ton of control and you can just drag that hue to whatever color you want. And honestly, guys, this is a game changer because 
now we can finally adjust colors in a very specific area and we have full control over those colors, which is just amazing. If you hit the fine adjustment tool here, it'll just slow it down so you can get it exactly where you want it. And this is just such a great feature because I don't know about you, but I am always making selective edits in my photos. Usually I'll apply a preset, I'll fine tune that preset, and then I'll fine tune the photo with these selective edits, whether it's a radio filter, a graduated filter, or a paintbrush. This is really gonna allow us to have so much more control over the colors in our image. And it's actually a really, really awesome update that everyone should be excited about because we've been waiting for this for so, so long. So the other update that Adobe added uh, that everyone's like talking about, oh my God, it's so exciting. For me, I, I don't really find it that useful, but it's the adaptive noise reduction feature. So you can create a preset that essentially is going to assess the ISO in each photo that you apply it to, and then it's gonna add noise reduction based on the ISO value. And you can create a preset by basically selecting two photos with different ISO values uh, and creating a preset based off of those. So here we have a photo that's pretty dark, 1600 ISO. I'm gonna raise the exposure here, um, and then I'm gonna go down to detail here, and I'm gonna make the noise reduction like 40. I'm not gonna go through and, and edit the photo because I'm just gonna show you guys how this works. But after you do that, you'll click another photo that has a different value ISO. So this one has 125 ISO. So I'm not gonna add any noise reduction because there's really like no noise, it's super clean. So now what you can do is you can hit Command, select both of them, go to Develop, New Presets, you can name it whatever you, whatever you want, ISO, Adapt, and then you check all or whatever, and then you click down here, Create ISO Adaptive Preset. And what it'll do is it'll look at how you adjusted the luminance on both photos, and it'll basically create a value that will then assess each photo and apply accordingly. So then if we go to this photo, this photo has uh, 1250 ISO. So if I go down to my user presets down here where they are, ISO adapt, it will automatically adjust the noise reduction to 35 because based on the ISO that I was using in this photo, that's the noise reduction value it thinks it should use. Personally, I, this isn't something that I'm gonna use. I'm not super interested in always making sure that my there's no noise in the photo. Like if there's a little bit of noise in the photo, honestly, it's fine. I'm not too picky about that. But if you are a pixel peeper and you just really need to make sure it's perfect every time and you just wanna create one preset and use it forever, this is a pretty cool feature to use. And it is cool to see Adobe making smaller changes like this because these smaller changes can add up and lead to a pretty good overall experience. But the localized hue adjustment is such a good update. I'm really happy that's here. I'm excited to make some videos to show you guys how that works a little bit better. I have some more Lightroom videos coming out soon. So once again, if you're new here guys, please consider subscribing. And then also the tone curve update is honestly, it's, it's really good. The tone curve is kind of confusing. The ability to see the colors and easily switch between the channels is really awesome. It's user friendly and ultimately that's great. The more user friendly we can make the software, the better it's gonna be for the majority of people out there. But that's it guys, just a quick update video showing you guys some of the features with Adobe Lightroom Classic 9.3. As always, we're dropping a new video this Friday. So if you're not already subscribed, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button so you won't miss that. This Friday, we're gonna be covering 10 things about Lightroom that you might not know and that you really should know because there's some awesome hidden features in Lightroom that can be an absolute game changer when it comes to photo editing. But thanks for watching guys. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you on Friday.